everybody, John Wagner here with Dev Central, and in this video we're going to talk about modern applications and what defines a modern application. If you remember in our last video we talked about legacy or monolithic applications compared to modern applications and just kind of the general basic architectural differences between the two. Um, and now we're going to get into the, more of the definition of what we would call pillars of modern applications and then some principles that you need to keep in mind when you're building modern applications. All right, so it's true that you know some some companies or businesses, whatever, have legacy or monolithic applications, and they're transitioning those over to modern applications. So the question becomes, hey, how do I know when it has arrived at, at a modern application? And so there's four pillars that we've defined on what you absolutely must have if you're going to call your application a modern application. And then there's different design principles or, or principles that we would mention to say, hey, when you're building these, you need to keep these things in mind, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is go over these four pillars. Um, the first one is uh, scalability, right? So scalability, right? Scalability um, is the ability to the ability to expand, right? And there's two different um, you know parts of scalability that I would mention. The first one is what, what I'll call fast scaling, and this is the ability to increase an application's capacity by 100%, so to double that within five minutes. So less than five minutes, you ought to be able to double the capacity of your application. That's fast scaling. And then long scaling is the other part of scalability. Long scaling is the ability to increase the application's capacity by 10 times or more over the period of a year. Right, so you need to be able to really, uh, you know, expand this thing out, and you need to be able to do that without requiring major refactoring of your code or large shifts in infrastructure requirements. Right, so you need to be able to to grow this thing. So you've got to have scalability. The second pillar is portability. Right, so portability. Portability is, you know, when we talk about the cloud era that we're all in right now, the dream is always that, you know, a, a DevOps team can just move an application from one cloud to another and it just runs perfectly, right? Well, that's not the way it works. So, uh, or that's typically not the way, the, that's not what reality is. So portability, I would say a couple of different things about portability. One, you need to have functional portability. And this is where the core functional elements, like the code, the logic, of the application must remain the same regardless of the environment that it's running in, right? And then there's management portability. This is where the management elements, like the the observability, the security, the logging, that kind of thing, that kind of thing, are environment agnostic. So you ought to be able to move around, move your application around, and still achieve that management. Um, so management portability is a is a key component of portability. Pillar number three is resiliency. So resiliency, right? It's resiliency. Resiliency is this generic term that talks about high availability, you know, um, strict SLAs regarding downtime or, you know, just general reliability standards, right? Um, but what, what I'm going to uh, propose is two different types of uh, resiliency that every modern application must have to serve its purpose. The, one, the first one is user-facing resiliency, and this is where application users, whether they're humans or machines, they must not ever notice a performance issue that's caused by a failure of the application itself or any or of any any service or infrastructure that uh, that the application depends on. Right. So um, this is where the user does not notice a performance issue. So that's user-facing user facing resiliency. The other one is failover resiliency. And this is where the application must be able to restore within five minutes of, a, of any kind of critical service. And it must be able to come back to what I would call 100% of what it's necessary to handle the average workload. So if you looked at an average workload for a given application, then it needs to be able to come back to 100% of that average workload within five minutes, right? So that's failover resiliency. Uh, and then the last pillar, number four, is agility, right? So everyone loves agility. And this is the ability to move around, right? So this is uh, moving quickly and decisively without a lot of effort, right? So there's a couple different types of agility. There's code agility. So code agility is the ability to ship code as frequently as desired, right? And so those development teams are like, yes, I want to just ship code whenever I want, right? So you need that code agility for your application. Uh, or your application needs to be able to handle code agility. 
And then the second is infrastructure agility. So this is where you can spin up or spin down infrastructure to satisfy the needs of all your customers, right? So you need code agility and infrastructure agility. So those are the four pillars of modern applications. So what we would say is, if you wanna call your application a modern application, it must have these things. It must have those, those components, all right? So then there are what I'm gonna call six principles that you need to think about that, uh, that, are, that, what I would, that are what I would call critical to modern applications. And the one is, uh, the first one here is agnostic, or it's, plat it's platform agnostic. So I'm just gonna put agnostic right here, right? So it doesn't matter um, where the application runs, the application needs to be able to handle that environment, right? And so it needs to be platform agnostic. The second is uh, open source software. So I'm just gonna put OSS, prioritize open source software. Um, you know, modern app teams need to be able to look under the hood of the code. They would need to be able to, to design this portability, this scalability, all these, all these pillars, right? And so you need to use open source uh, whenever you possibly can, all right? The third one that I'm gonna put is define everything possible by code. So I'm gonna put define, define by code, right? So modern applications have to be able to move at faster than human speed. And so the automation, the programmatic definition, everything needs to be defined by code wherever possible. So that's one of the, uh, one of the principles that we would mention as you're building applications. Um, the fourth one, is design with automated CI/CD as the native or default state. So I'll just put um, automated, automated CI/CD, right? So um, you know, a lot of times applications are built and then they're poured over into the CI/CD pipelines. You need to design this um, as the native default state, this automated CI/CD uh, process, right? Uh, the fifth principle that I would mention is secure development. So I'll just put secure uh, dev right here, right? So you need to test the code as early as possible in the uh, development process. Um, you need to test any code prior to deployment um, and you need to not deploy applications unless a WAF, like a web application firewall, is up and running. So there needs to be security built into your, your thinking, your processes, right? And then the sixth principle that I would mention in modern applications is widely distributed storage and infrastructure. So I'll say distributed um, storage, storage and, and infrastructure. So I'll just put infra right there, right? So widely distributed storage and infrastructure. So, you know, in today's world, your end users, uh, certainly end users of these modern applications, they're gonna be anywhere. They're gonna be everywhere from their house to their car, to their office, to an airplane at 35,000 feet above the earth, to you know, some boat out in the middle of the ocean, or you know, who knows where, right? They may even be on the International Space Station for all you know, right? So, I mean, your users are everywhere, so your storage and your infrastructure needs to be as wide and distributed as it can possibly be. Okay, so again, these are four pillars that when you want to call an application a modern application, they must have these pillars. And then these are six design principles that you can, that you need to think about, that you need to incorporate in building, or if you're transitioning an application, you need to put these principles in place uh, as part of a modern application. So thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this, you can click up here on our Dev Central logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.